Good to see you again. This is Visual Light Photography Tutorials. I'm Ray Scott. Today we're going to show you how to multiply light trails. Now, if you're not sure how to shoot light trails, maybe you've never done it before, I have a really good video and it takes you through all the steps on how to create stunning light trails. So I'll put that banner up now so that you can click on that if you need to go to that video to find out how to shoot light trails. Now, if you're familiar with the whole process of shooting light trails, this is kind of like part two of that video and I'm going to show you how to multiply light trails. Now if you've seen that video you'll recall that the whole thing with me in terms of shooting light trails is not just to shoot them uh, maybe like on an overpass or something but to also have an interesting background something there that's just more than light trails. So that's what this is about setting up the proper composition and then shooting light trails. Now the problem with that is if you're in a situation like I was where you have a subject that you really like but there's only one or two cars going by every few minutes it makes it very difficult. So this is where you have to create uh, an image that has more light trails and you multiply them and I'll show you how to do that. What you're seeing on your screen right now is the beautiful 100-year-old Regent Theatre, which, by the way, is still in operation. Now, as you can see, this is what I'm talking about. I wanted a scene where there was something that I thought was really, really interesting, but there are only one or two cars that come by every now and then once it gets dark outside, so it created a problem. I wanted to have a lot of light trails. So what I did was I combined 11 images in Photoshop to create that photo. Now, you don't have to have Photoshop. You can Any software that supports layers and blend modes, you can do this. Now, just before we get going, I used a tripod so that everything would be perfectly aligned so that later on when I brought in the images to Photoshop, I didn't even have to press the Align Layers button because they were already aligned on this sturdy tripod. I was also shooting uh, with my 16 to 35 millimeter zoom lens at 16 millimeters, but it doesn't have to be that, of course. It can be to taste as you want. And I was shooting at an aperture of f16 so that I could have uh, a longer exposure. Um, by the way, if uh, you want to subscribe to the channel, uh, please do so. But remember to tap the bell icon so that you will get notifications on all of my new videos as they arrive on YouTube. All right, and if you have questions or comments, you can address those down below. Okay, let's get going on multiplying light trails. So first, we'll quickly go through how to load your images into Photoshop. In this particular tutorial, I'm using 10 images, but you may want to use two or three. You may even want to use 15 to 20. It's totally up to you. First thing you do, you go up to File. Scripts, load files into stack. Now you're going to browse to find your files. Once you've located your files and you found them, you open them into Photoshop. You see them all here, press OK. Now to save time, uh, what I've done is I've moved the video along. So now you see all of the layers that I've that I'm using. All of these files, I want to use them. And actually in the end, I'm using 11 files. Now I know from the beginning that I want to use number 19 here on title 19. I want that to be my base and you'll see why in a moment. So I'm going to move that down to the bottom, make it the bottom layer because I'm calling that my base layer. Okay. What you're seeing right now is actually the top layer, this one here, and let's turn them all off by hitting Option and then clicking on this I down here. So that's the base layer. That's what I want. All of these other ones are other images that I've taken of other light trails. So this is the one that I want to use, and you'll see why in a moment, uh, why I've chose, chosen to have a base layer. All right, so if we click on the next layer, and you can see some light trails here, on this layer. Now if I click on the next layer, that's what the next one looks like. Okay, and you see a different set of light trails and an, even a different exposure. You don't have to worry about that. If I click on another one, you'll see I'm adding another layer. 
different light trails, another layer, and so on and so forth. Okay, so you get the idea? All right. So starting with the base layer, what I want to do is I want to go to the next layer, layer number two here. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to expose it so you can see it. All right. Now here's where the magic begins. It's all about layers and it's all about blend modes. Right now the blend mode, the default is to go to normal. We're going to change that to something called pin light and watch what happens. You see how the two have come in? See how the two layers have come in? That's the first layer. That's the original. And now you've added some more. Now you may be looking up at the Regent Theater itself and saying, oh, that's not exactly what I want. It doesn't look as nice as it did in the first. We're going to fix that later on. Now, by the way, if you recall the first tutorial, as I mentioned uh, before, it's all about using a background that you really like so that you're not just taking pictures of an overpass or something like that. You're getting, you're going to get light trails, but you're also going to have a building or some other, something else, some other subject matter that you think is interesting to look at. So it's more than just light trails. All right. The third layer, if I turn that one on, okay, and then change that from normal to pin light, now we've added more light trails. All right. Layer four. Change it from normal, the blend mode, to pin light. And we'll add more light trails. So what I'm going to do now is just continue to do that. And for time, for saving t purposes of time, I'm going to move ahead quickly. Okay, so I've changed all of the layers to the blend mode called pin light. And now you can see all of the light trails. But the theater is looking a little strange and the sky isn't the way I want it. And even the road down here is not exactly the way I want it. So let's just take a quick comparison right now to start with. This is what we had, the original shot. And these are all the layers stacked on top. All right, so you can see all the light trails. But the theater, again, let's go back. I like the exposure on the theater and the sky actually better than what we see here. So how are we going to fix that? Well, it gets kind of easy after that. What we do is we highlight the first layer up here is highlighted and we go down to the second to last layer and we press the shift key and we highlight all of them. All right, no problem there. Now we go over here to this flyout menu and we say new group from layers. So we're going to group all of these 10 layers into one grouping. We'll just call it group one for now. Okay. You can call it anything you want. And there it is there. It's not lost. It's all there. You see all the layers are in the group. No problem there. Now what we're going to do is on that layer, we're going to put a mask. All right. So that group of layers is highlighted. You go down here and go to that little washing machine type of icon at the bottom of the layers panel and you press that and a mask appears. Now, because white reveals and black conceals, we're going to select the brush tool by hitting the B key, or you can just go up here and click at it. And now that we have our brush selected and it is in black in the foreground, we know that it's going to conceal. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away all of these layers. I'm just going to leave the original layer. Now watch what's going to happen. Okay. Now you can use, you can use a gradient tool if you want or any other something else to take out all of those layers, but I'm actually just going to brush this out. This is the way I want to do it. Okay. And now we're just going to move ahead quickly. Okay. So now you see what I've done. I've taken away all of those layers, all of that overexposure and the weird colors and everything else. And I've made my background look exactly the way I wanted all of this, but the light trails have remained the same. All right. 
And remember, all of those layers are still there, but I've masked out the upper portion of each layer. So now, the original and with the light trails. Now, I wasn't really standing close enough uh, to the road, so there's kind of a lot of dead space down below. I don't really like that. So if you wanted to have less dead space, you could crop it and have something like that. And that way you're a little bit closer to the light trails. And there you have your final image. How about that? Really, really easy, right? All you have to do is have layers and use the pin light blend mode and you can really multiply your light trails. Until next time, I'm Ray Scott reminding you it's not what you see, it's how you see it. And I'll see you soon.